All right, so when it comes to productivity on these iPads, I'm doing a lot. Anywhere from video editing to music production, it's always been a thing for me. And even sometimes some light video gaming on the iPad. I've always just enjoyed using these as external devices. But up until recently, I don't think I've ever really considered building a stationary workstation for the iPad standalone. At least not here at my home studio desk setup. But up until now, I think I've always treated the iPad like an external device that usually ends up complementing my desktop workflow. Whether that's mixing and matching the iPads for external screens or even music production using the samplers on my iPad apps, I don't think I've ever had a standalone iPad desk setup. I mean, I've got a hardware setup, I have a desktop setup for all my software, and now it's about that time to get started building my iPad desk setup. Because let's face it, there are still some workflows and things that I can do on the iPad much more efficiently than I can do on desktop hardware or anything else. And I'm going to just come out and say it. I miss making beats on my iPad. I'm not even gonna front. So I wanted to give a quick shout out to Arturia and Pitaka for kickstarting this conversation and helping me start to build this new setup. Nothing in this video is being sponsored, otherwise I would just tell you, but Arturia and Pitaka did send me out some of these products so that I can test them in my workflow and review them for my new setup. So with that being said, let's jump into what we're looking at for what might be the start of my new iPad desk setup. Let's start off talking about the iPad mini 6 since that is the device that I'm using the most these days. Now I do already have a current setup and a list of my favorite accessories that I already use with my iPad mini 6 and I'll link that video somewhere up here. But since using this new accessory has made me think twice about how I want to use my iPad mini in the future. This is a Mag Easy Case Pro for the iPad mini 6 with the included PetaFlow charger. This case and charger combo actually gives you a simple wireless charging experience for your iPad mini 6. So for anybody who's ever wanted to wirelessly charge their iPad mini 6, this case will allow you to do that. It's a lot like Apple's very own MagSafe wireless charging system, but it's not quite MagSafe. This is more of an ecosystem that Pataka has created. The case is made from a flexible and premium aramid fiber material. With a reinforced frame for the iPad mini 6, it's still actually surprisingly very thin. It has the magnetic attachment on the back for Pitaka's ecosystem for the wireless charging, and it even includes an optional Apple Pencil Clip. You don't have to install this if you don't want to, but it's, it's optional and you can install this if you want to. And this is one of the things that I actually grew to like about this case because a lot of the other protective cases that I've seen for the iPad mini 6 have this built-in stationary clip that is not optional. You can't take it off and it just adds extra bulk to your iPad mini 6. Pataka did include some instructions on how to install the case onto the iPad mini 6, but it's really straightforward. All you have to do is slide the iPad mini 6 in so that the USB type C connector goes into the iPad and you kind of just peel and snap the case around the rest of the iPad. And well, like I said, once the case is on, it's still surprisingly really thin and really slim. This case does a really good job of protecting the iPad mini and the included wireless charger is actually a very, very strong magnet. It really does feel just as simple as the MagSafe wireless charging from Apple. Since I use the iPad mini so much for using external devices like plugging up external hard drives for video editing or even some external MIDI controllers, this case does take away a lot of the versatility that the iPad mini 6 has afforded me. While I could see how this case could be useful to me in some applications like some wireless video gaming and wireless video editing using some wireless headphones, there are times where I need to plug up external devices for that low latency or no latency productivity straight into the iPad. And since this case blocks the only port that the iPad mini has, that kind of turns into a problem for me. I do wish that this case could offer some type of pass through so that I could still connect my external devices while still being able to wirelessly charge and not have to peel off the case every time I wanna use anything with my iPad mini 6. The second thing is that this case does not come with a charging brick for its own charger. And Pataka even recommends that you use at least a 30 watt charging brick for this wireless charging setup, but they don't include that in the box. Luckily, I've had quite a few solutions already laying around, so I've had the Nomad 30-watt USB Type-C charging brick. 
So the second thing that Pataka actually sent me was the Mag Easy charging stand for tablets. This is another thing that really works well for their iPad ecosystem. This features that slim industrial design with a really low profile and again showing off that carbon fiber texture on the base. But the stand for this whole ecosystem actually does a little bit more than just hold up your iPad. You can magnetically wirelessly charge the iPad Mini 6 with the Pataka case. This delivers 20 watts of wireless charging to your iPad mini. And the base actually doubles as a Qi wireless charger, delivering up to 15 watts of wireless charging to your other devices like your phone or your AirPods. But there is still one thing that I'm just still not a fan of. This wireless stand actually requires at least 45 watts for the whole wireless setup, top and bottom. But they still don't include a charging brick. I don't know why companies keep doing this, but Again, we have another solution for that. This is another solution from Nomad, and this is the 65 watt charging brick that also features two ports, one on the top and one on the bottom. I'll put the link in the description for those as well as everything else. All those links are affiliate links, by the way. So if you do purchase these using my links, I do get a small kickback from that, which does help the channel and help me keep making videos just like this. So I would really appreciate if companies like Pataco or any other company that has wireless charging solutions or charging solutions, period, uh, just include the, the brick in the box. I just don't understand why companies assume that we have these things just lying around. So now I gotta go searching and fishing around for other all right i'm done ranting i'll be on here all day if i started so let's move on assembling the stand was actually pretty easy it actually comes with a allen wrench tool that actually magnetically connects to the bottom of the base so that you don't lose it the cable that comes with the stand is actually not long at all so if you wanted to fish this around to your desk you have to work that out somehow so as convenient as wirelessly charging my iPad mini is, I'm trying to find a practical way to implement that into my iPad productivity workflow, seeing as how I can't really use external devices plugged into my iPad mini because that port is gone. It's actually kind of making me want to go back to using my 11 inch iPad Pro for the more productivity stuff like that. Like I said, this will work great for anything that I use the iPad mini for wirelessly, but using external devices just doesn't make sense for that type of case. So this brings me to the next piece of the ecosystem that Pataka actually sent out to me. So if I'm considering going back to the 11 inch iPad Pro for productivity, Pataka's Mag Easy Case 2 is right up my alley. This is an extremely wafer thin, lightweight, easy to access, the same aramid fiber material with the magnetic attachment built in. And it's even compatible with the Mag Easy stand. This one doesn't have the wireless charging built in, but it does protect the iPad and it still has the precision cutouts for the USB type C port. And it still has the pass through connectivity for the smart connector. So if you want to still use this with your Apple magic keyboard, it'll still be compatible while still protecting the edges of your iPad. And if you don't have the Apple keyboard already, they have a mag easy folio for the iPad pro. So overall, I'm not really mad at this overall design for putting this on the desk. It's pretty low profile and it offers me some really good viewing angles up to 120 degrees for both devices. It sits up pretty tall and offers some really good functionality, but I do wish that it was more of a hub base than a wireless charging base. I could see myself getting a lot more use out of a data hub than wireless charging. This was almost perfect. If you could just marry the two, this would be absolutely 10 out of 10 perfect. But for right now, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. Speaking of data hubs and external devices, the next items I wanna to talk to you about has been sent to me from Arturia. Arturia has just released the brand new Mini Lab Mark III. These are some dope portable keys for the modern creator and beat maker, especially if you've been looking for a mini workstation for your iPad. You can also use this for your desktop and laptop situations because they do include a lot of software. So there's not really many companies that impress me when it comes to mobile MIDI keyboards, especially those of this size. And if you know anything about this channel, you already know that I'm heavily invested into the Arturia ecosystem. So it really just made sense for me to go for something that is familiar familiar as well as modern to my current workflow. I have been previously been using this micro lab from Arturia, which has actually turned out to be one of my favorite keyboards, be simply because of this key bed and just how good it works with the software. So now having more access to transport controls as well as the knobs and the faders on this instrument and even a built-in chord mode and arpeggiators and there's a lot of stuff that's built into this device for around the same price that I paid for the micro lab. This new updated design actually features the more rounded corners that make this look a lot more modern than the 
predecessor. It still has that famous Arturia finish with the wooden grain look on the sides. And Arturia is also famous for their amazing feeling key beds, especially on their portable devices. The pads actually feel really good. The knobs and faders have a nice amount of resistance to them. It doesn't feel like a cheap device at all. And this new version also has this built-in LED display so that you can see the type of settings that you're creating with. I definitely did not used to be a fan of this touch ribbon, pitch bender, or modulation control, but it actually grew on me. This version of the Mini Lab Mark III actually features a MIDI out port for your external devices or your DAW, and it has a control port for your expression pedals or a sustain pedal and then it connects via usb type c although in the box they included a usb type c to a port which i don't know most of our devices are usb type c so i felt like they should have just gave us both i'll be doing some beat making videos with the mini lab mark 3 and the ipad as well as this whole setup so the next thing that arturia sent me for this setup was the mini fuse 4. This is Arturia's brand new audio interface that features four inputs and four outputs. It can either be bus power through your USB-C port to your iPad, or you can use this as a USB hub. So if you use this as a hub, you will have to plug this into a, the DC power unit. Arturia does include the DC power cable needed to power that hub. So because the iPad only has that one port, you can actually use that USB hub to plug in your mini lab Mark III and any other external USB device. Let's say like a hard drive or a, I don't know, another MIDI keyboard. And with this setup, you still might need to be able to charge your iPad while you're using all these things. So I have a USB-C dongle from Basius that I use to plug into the iPad and still be able to have extra ports available. So if I'm editing video or using external devices like these, I'll still be able to charge my iPad while these are connected. So let me show you what this audio interface sounds like real quick. All right, so this is what the audio sounds like coming straight out of the microphone. I'm using the Shure MV7 straight into the Arturia Mini Fuse 4. And this is what it sounds like going straight into the iPad setup. I have the gain on the Arturia Mini Fuse 4 at about 3 o'clock. And this is just what it sounds like. So I'm going to be quiet so you can hear what it sounds like when the room is quiet. And so <laughs> that's what everything sounds like when I'm just using. So if I turn this gain up all the way, I can actually hear a little bit of nothing. Um, I have the gain all the way up on the Arturia Mini Fuse. And this is, again, what it sounds like when the room is quiet. It's really good preamps. So this is the iPad setup with the Arturia Mini Fuse as well as the Shure MV7. I currently have the Mini Lab Mark III hooked up and um, yeah, this is the audio quality that you can expect coming from the iPad and the Arturia Mini Fuse setup. So this has been the very first look of the start of my very first iPad desk setup. It's not perfect to me yet. There's still some things that I want to figure out as far as the look and the feel of it. But functionality wise, I'm really, really happy with what I have right now. One thing that I'm really struggling with in my studio overall is just cable management and just how everything looks aesthetically. I just, I'm not a fan of cables, especially when it comes to iPad. I'm so used to using wireless Bluetooth devices with my whole setup. So I don't know, maybe I might switch back and forth between wireless and using the Arturia uh, Mini Lab Mark III. I just gotta figure out how I wanna use everything and just make it make sense and find ways to make everything work together. If I'm making beats on the iPad or if I'm making beats on the desktop or I'm making beats on the laptop or even on the hardware stuff, I want everything to all come together. So this is me starting my iPad desk setup. Let me know if you have any recommendations or any accessories or tools that you recommend for my setup or things that you wanna see me try out in this type of setup. Let's chop it up in the comments section and if I was able to give you any insight on how you wanna build your desk setup, let me know that too in the comments section and don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if this was helpful and if you wanna see more in the future. Thanks for rocking with me. Thanks for rocking with the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.